Hello all, so finally it's time to actually check our neural network whether it is really working or not. So as I have been mentioning many times, we are targeting an application called the MNIST database. So MNIST, it's a very popular data set or database for uh, evaluating neural networks. So its aim is actually to find handwritten digits. Okay, so this database it uh, already has 60,000 images for training purpose, then another 10,000 images for actually testing uh, to check the accuracy of the neural network. Now, uh, again, Wikipedia, you can see the performance of a lot of previous implementation, and we are somewhat this one, uh, a deep neural network, DNN, because we have multiple hidden layers, okay? So in the MNIST data set, this is how actually the images will look like. You can see they are handwritten digits between uh, 0 to 9. And uh, each image here, it is scaled to a 28 by 28 uh, frame. Okay, so that's the uh, size of each image. So when we say 28 times 28, there are 784 pixels for each image and this 784 pixels they are acting as the input and the aim is to detect which is this input okay so that's why you will see like all these uh, dnn implementation the first layer so these are like just two layers this is like sixth layer every neural network its first layer will have 784 okay because uh, there are those many pixels now uh, how that data set really looks is slightly different from this one this is like a black and white image we have only white pixels and black pixels but the one we are going to use it has a grayscale representation and the background will be black and the character or the digit will be in grayscale so you can imagine like it's black color we can see it mnist data set in some images uh, maybe more like uh, this it will look like again this is uh, black and white but in our case this will be grayscale okay it won't be pure white it can be any value between uh, 0 to 255 for each digit okay so that's what we are aiming for so we are implementing as of now a four layer uh, neural network so you can see I have already added to a project so there are four layers, layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, layer 4, and the input layer, uh, which we do not see here. So in layer 1, we have 30 neurons. You can see the hierarchy here. Uh, layer 2, also 30, and other two layers, 10 each. And the last layer, this is the output layer, layer 4, and whichever neuron's output is the highest, uh, that represents the input digit. That's the idea. So... We have this max finder module which detects which our module's output is the highest right? and uh, all other files we have discussed before this include file it has all the information like uh, what is the type of uh, activation function how many neurons are in each layer things like that when we have memory initialization files for all biases weights and sigmoid if we are using sigmoid okay so first time uh, let's use sigmoid and uh, run it so i have also written a test bench this one top.sim so this guy reads one particular digit or particular test image and he will inject it to our neural network through our axis stream interface again uh, it's not complex so, so no it look it's very straightforward now the test data uh, as I mentioned there are 10,000 actually uh, test data they have been actually converted into text format and I have kept them in my sim folder you can see this is my project my project one my project one why it looks like that like uh, no sensible name maybe uh, i will explain later uh, so i have all the 10000 images here but this time i'm not using binary representation i'm using a text representation so this is the content of each file you can see there are 
784 values and uh, each of them represents a pixel and the pixel values they are stored in binary representation uh, using 16 digit but you will see always 15 here because the MS bit will be always zero because they are all positive and I am using one integer to represent uh, one digit to represent the integer part okay now there are 784 in addition to that there is a 785th entry also which is actually representing which digit is this so that when the neural network it gives an output I can compare with this value and really find whether he properly detected or not so for example uh, I can see this first number it is actually 7 one, one, one. this is also in binary and uh, the second number is this one one zero which is two so and so forth so what our test bench does is he will take one image from here he will inject it he will wait for that interrupt coming from our neural network when he gets that interrupt he will check which neurons output is highest from that uh, max finder through the axi light interface and if he finds like it is matching with this one yeah he will find say like it is correct if it is not matching uh, he will say like that's wrong okay and there's a accuracy calculation also based on that we can find out how many outputs are correctly coming now at the top there is a tick defined here for simulation file max test sample so there are 10,000 images for testing if you test all 10,000 it's going to take a lot of time so here you can specify how many you want to test so 100 means first 100 uh, images will be tested okay so you can put any value up to 10,000 there so that he tests up to 10,000 okay so now let's go ahead and test it we are using 100 and uh, we are going to use sigmoid activation function so you can see for every layer the activation type is specified as sigmoid and let's see how much accuracy he's going to give and the sigmoid size is 10 that means the depth of that sigmoid memory is 1024 okay okay so just go ahead and say run simulation and let's run it now while simulation is running you can actually see uh, he's injecting each number so you can see the test number here and in real time you can see like how much accuracy is he's achieving so it's like 96 now so he's saying what number is detected here and what is the expected so that expected number is finding from this one and the received number is getting from the max finder okay and the accuracy is 98 percent which is which is not bad actually for our hardware implementation and this accuracy also depends upon the weights and biases i didn't really explain how we got them we got it from a software implementation okay so it depends upon the training also so if the training is bad uh, we can't expect a better result but 98 is pretty good so let's store this information also for future so i already have this resource utilization data and sigmoid 10 yeah so let's say accuracy is 98 percent and use sigmoid with depth 10 and we also have a case where sigmoid depth is 5 for saving some resources so let's try that now for doing it again if you are manually doing everything what you need to do is in the include you need to change the sigmoid size to 5 here and you need to uh, change this uh, Sigrom content file, memory initialization file uh, to change this one. This file you have to change to those 32 sigmoid values. Okay, and uh, there is a script for that I have given you before. Now uh, I will have more design automation. That part I will explain later. So this will be ultimately how it will look like. So here you can see there's a parameter sigmoid size. So I'm just changing it to five, keeping everything else same and i'm just running this script mnisdynet.py design automation we will discuss in a separate tutorial okay so he has done 
if you come back and see here uh, he has modified it here he has also also modified this file also so you don't have to do anything manually so let's rerun the simulation we have to rerun it because the source code has been changed Now you can see the accuracy has come down to 96%. Okay, so this is the price we are paying for. We save some resources, but the accuracy came down. Okay, Fmax also came down. That reason I explained because our block RAM was converted into distributed RAM. Okay, again, not very bad uh, for this much uh, resource saving. 2% penalty on accuracy. Uh, may be fine again depends on the application so sigmoid part is done so let's go and try the relu how it is behaving to change it to relu i have to do a few things i need to change the activation function to relu for all the layers and i need to change the weights and biases used they should be the weights and biases for relu Again, this design automation part I will explain to you later. Uh, don't worry. Okay, once it is done, I will just rerun the script. And now, if I come back and look at this include file, you can see all of them have changed to relu type. Okay, so we have to rerun relaunch everything and run and the accuracy is around 91% now so you can see it's it's pretty low compared to Zigmoid <laughs> okay so maybe uh, I guess for at least for MList uh, application Sigmoid is performing much better than ReLU, but in terms of clock performance, uh, ReLU has an advantage. So if you are planning to run somewhere around 200 megahertz, okay, uh, I would say the best option is this one, using Sigmoid with the depth 10, and uh, which is giving like 98% accuracy. Okay, Again, uh, uh, this claim is true only if the software training, the weights and biases that we got from software training, uh, they are comparable. If the training was bad for ReLU, yeah, of course, it will perform bad for ReLU. But at least for this application, I would claim like uh, Sigmoid is giving better accuracy. Another issue with ReLU is we really didn't implement the ReLU. Okay? Actually, ReLU is an unbound function. So it is supposed to linearly keep on increasing as the input increases. But if you remember our implementation of ReLU, we have a saturation logic here uh, to make sure the number of digits representing the integer part, it is not overflowing. Okay? Because of that, we are limiting the upper bound uh, for ReLU. And in this particular implementation, number of digits used for representing input is only one bit. That means we are saturating at one. The output of that ReLU, it is just get saturated at one. But in software training time, uh, this limitation is not there. Uh, there is no upper bound for ReLU. So there will be issue because of that also. Uh, that will be the main reason, I guess, uh, ReLU is giving lower performance. But in hardware implementation, we are forced to uh, saturate it. Uh, maybe in the future, once I explain this uh, design automation, 
uh, we can change this one because uh, as of now I cannot just go and change this uh, I will have to change some other parameters also like the data width if I want to change this one so once I explain this design automation we may try with a larger input in size and see like whether that will give better performance for it. so in this tutorial we will cover only this much I will put all the source code uh, in the next tutorial I will explain you uh, this design automation I will basically tell you how we are actually generating these weights and biases automatically and uh, how can you easily generate any neural network using this Python script. So this is inspired from TensorFlow. Those who have seen TensorFlow, you will see like it's using very, very similar syntax. Okay. Uh, it's very quite, quite similar to TensorFlow. So I, uh, I will explain you like how it is working and those who need to know the details beforehand you can just search for my paper this one Zynet which was published just uh, last year uh, automation of uh, deep neural network so again this is a work still under progress as of now we have only uh, DNNs fully connected DNNs but soon there will be automation for CNNs and other kind of neural network like uh, LSTM, things like that. Okay. Thank you. See you in the next tutorial.